when it when it comes to aliens, uh, there are some things I just can't tell you. It's rotating. My gosh, they're all going against the wind. Oh, I think, dude. Truth is that when I came into office, I asked. There's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. And I know that it was a UFO. I don't care what anybody says. You never told anybody about that? I'm honestly just kind of scared. Were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. While the U.S. government and governments throughout the world decline the existence of aliens, there's some solid proof given by U.S. congressmen and several scientists about the existence of aliens. So what is it that the governments hide from us? What is inside Area 51? What were those Tic Tac objects discovered by aircraft carrier USS Nimitz? Today we dive into a riveting exploration, unveiling five instances that suggest the existence of aliens, moments that challenge our understanding of the universe. From classified government facilities to mind-bending encounters in the skies, join us as we unravel the enigma surrounding alien existence. Buckle up and let's embark on a journey through five times when alien existence was proved. But be warned, the evidence we're about to uncover might just reshape your perception of reality. Number five, Area 51 disclosed. Area 51, the focal point of virtually every extraterrestrial conspiracy. Amidst persistent speculations about secret military activities and extraterrestrial studies at this undisclosed development and testing facility, one can't help but question the validity of these rumors. According to Bob Lazar, the unequivocal answer is a resounding yes. Bob Lazar asserted that he was recruited to work at Area 51 in the late 80s with a remarkable task, the reverse engineering of alien spacecraft. My name's Bob Lazar. I'm known for working at a classified base known as S-4 out in the Nevada desert near Area 51. And there, we reverse engineered alien spacecraft. Going back to 1997, Lazar claimed that the extraterrestrial craft he worked on operated with an antimatter reactor fueled by a stable form of element 115. Notably, Earth scientists officially synthesized element 115 only in 2003, and its stabilization remains a significant challenge. Lazar detailed that the reactor he examined had a basketball-sized sphere on top, emitting a force field capable of repelling human flesh. He elucidated that the craft was divided into two primary levels. The upper level housed the reactor at the center, featuring an antenna extending to the top, surrounded by three gravity amplifiers. According to Lazar, these amplifiers served as guides for the gravity wave, shaping into a heart around the entire craft and narrowing at the bottom. These linked to gravity emitters on the lower level, capable of rotating 180 degrees to emit an anti-gravity wave. According to Bob Lazar, the craft would then maneuver belly first into this distortion field. Essentially, as per Lazar's account, flying saucers navigate sideways rather than in an upright position, facilitated by versatile engines enabling movement in any direction. Additionally, Lazar asserted that he had perused briefing documents outlining Earth's historical interactions with extraterrestrial beings over the past 10,000 years, depicting the typical child-sized gray aliens, of which he claimed to have observed similar-sized cadavers. Up to the present time, all institutions where Bob alleges he was employed or studied staunchly refute his presence. However, American journalist George Knapp, who delved into Bob's assertions, contended that Bob exhibited a familiarity with the facility consistent with someone who had first-hand experience. Naturally, some assert that this denial is part of a broader cover-up. Despite claims that he is a relatively inexperienced technician, it's worth noting that Bob has constructed a jet car for recreational purposes and has gained recognition in various newspapers for his innovative creations, underscoring his credentials as a skilled engineer. Bob even asserted the existence of a specific biometric hand scanner utilized at the base, which authenticated access based on the measurement of bone lengths in one's hand. 
Initially denied by the government, decades later, the Department of Defense acknowledged the use of such a scanner at Area 51 in the 80s for the stealth fighter program. Bob corroborated that the declassified version matched the one he had encountered. At any point, either organization could have simply acknowledged Bob Lazar's association with them, attributing any discrepancies to his purported mental state. However, they persist in denying any knowledge of him, prompting questions about their motivations. While it's not to assert absolute veracity in Bob's claims, the numerous enigmatic coincidences make it challenging for anyone to comfortably dismiss skepticism. Regarding the veracity of Bob's claims, he has consistently adhered to the same narrative for over 30 years and reportedly passed lie detector tests on the subject. This consistency may lend some credence to his assertions. However, it's essential to consider that Bob has faced multiple convictions for various crimes since his testimony, a fact that critics often highlight to cast doubt on his story. But who knows? As some of the sightings coming up might make you think he's telling the truth. Number 4. Foo Fighters in November 1944, a U.S. fighter plane traversed the night skies above the Rhine Valley on the French-German border. In the darkness, a lieutenant observed a sequence of unsettling glowing lights in the distance, presuming them to be German air weapons. They prepared for combat, but the lights mysteriously vanished. This marked the start of a series of inexplicable sightings during wartime. Other pilots reported encountering peculiar luminous orbs, flashing lights, and even unidentified objects flying in close proximity. These mysterious phenomena came to be known as Foo Fighters, a term inspired by a popular comic book called Smokey Stover at the time. It's worth noting that there's also a band with the same name, but it's improbable that Dave Grohl was present in the 1940s. The nature of these Foo Fighters remains a subject of speculation. Some argue that the soldiers might have experienced combat fatigue, suggesting that the stress and trauma of war led to hallucinations. However, those who knew the observers claimed they seemed mentally stable. Another theory suggests that Foo Fighters were experimental enemy crafts, but if that were the case, wouldn't we have known by now? Many people believe they were actual alien visitors arriving to observe and learn about human aircraft. If that's the case, why don't we encounter UFOs trailing us during vacations? Consider this. The Second World War stands as the most devastating conflict in human history. It's conceivable that extraterrestrials, hearing the tumult from a distant galaxy, ventured to investigate the commotion. Upon witnessing the folly of human behavior, they might have swiftly retreated, leading to a decline in sightings. All settled? Fantastic. Let's resume our discussion. Number 3. The Tic Tac Object A naval strike group, led by the U.S. aircraft carrier USS Nimitz, was engaged in pre-deployment exercises off the northwest coast of Mexico in late 2004. On November 10th, the USS Princeton detected unusual radar signals near San Clement Island. These signals did not match any known aircraft and manifested randomly in groups of five to ten at a time. The senior operator of the radar system, possessing nearly two decades of experience with these systems and expertise in the scientific apparatus at the time, found the situation perplexing. Suspecting a malfunction, they turned off and recalibrated the recently upgraded SPY-1 radar. To everyone's surprise, this action only intensified the radar tracks. They witnessed firsthand the targets exhibiting physics-defying maneuvers. Notably, the objects moved at speeds inconsistent with birds and were too slow for conventional aircraft. In some instances, they descended from space to sea level in a matter of seconds, resembling an altitude drop from over 20,000 meters. This rapid descent would likely create significant turbulence. Subsequently, the objects lingered for hours with these observations spanning multiple days. During each occurrence, the crew observed these small specks displaying irregular movement in the distance through their high-powered binoculars on board. On the morning of November 14th, 
an extraordinary event transpired. Strike Fighter Squadron 41 embarked on a routine training operation from the aircraft carrier when the enigmatic radar tracks reappeared. Lieutenant Douglas Kurth received instructions to investigate the unknown target approaching from the south. As he navigated towards the coordinates, he observed a substantial disturbance in the water and claimed to have seen something submerged just below the surface. According to his description, it resembled a submarine or ship beneath the ocean's surface. Although the strike group included the USS Louisville, a nuclear submarine in the vicinity, which could potentially explain the turbulence in the water, subsequent observations cast doubt on this explanation. Kurth was accompanied by two other fighter jets, each with two occupants, with Commander David Fravor leading one of them. Fravor, too, asserted that he witnessed the disturbance on the ocean and characterized it as much larger than a submarine. While Kurth returned to the Nimitz, Commander Fravor and his wingman opted to investigate more closely. I'll now share the clip of Commander Fravor describing this encounter in his own words before Congress. Peace. We arrived at the location at approximately 20,000 feet in a controller called Merge Plot, which means that our radar blip was now in the same resolution cell as the contact. As we looked around, we noticed that we saw some white water off our right side. It's important to note that the weather on this day was as close to perfect as you could ask for off the coast of San Diego. Clear skies, light winds, calm seas, no white caps from waves. So the white water stood out in a large blue ocean. All four of us, because we were an F-18F, so we had pilots and Wizzo in the back seat, looked down a small, saw a white tic-tac object with a longitudinal axis pointing north-south and moving very abruptly over the water like a ping-pong ball. There were no rotors, no rotor wash, or any sign of visible control surfaces like wings. As we started clockwise towards the object, my Wizzo and I decided to go down and take a closer look with the other aircraft staying in high cover to observe both us and the tic-tac. We proceeded around the circle about 90 degrees from the start of our descent, and the object, ob object suddenly shifted its longitudinal axis, aligned it with my aircraft, and began to climb. We continued down another 270 degrees, nose low, where the tic-tac, or we considered 270 degrees to where, the, and we went nose low to where the tic-tac would have been. Our altitude at this point was about 15,000 feet, and the tic-tac was about 12,000. As we pulled nose onto the object within about a half mile of it, it rapidly accelerated in front of us and disappeared. Our wingmen, roughly 8,000 feet above us, lost contact also. We immediately turned back to see where the white water was at, and it was gone also. So as we started to turn back towards the east, the controller came up and said, sir, you're not gonna believe this, but that thing is at your cat point roughly 60 miles away in less than a minute. You can calculate the speed. We returned to Nimitz, we were taking off our gear, we were talking to one of my crews that was getting ready to launch, we mentioned it to them, and they went out and luckily got the video that you see, that 90 second video. Upon Commander Fravor's group's return to the aircraft carrier, he briefed the next departing flight crew, advising them to remain vigilant. This subsequent crew was equipped with an advanced targeting forward-looking infrared camera system under the control of the weapon system operator, Chad Underwood, seated behind the pilot. Shortly after departure, Underwood detected something on his radar a few tens of kilometers away. Underwood noted, the part that drew our attention was how the object wasn't behaving within the normal laws of physics. Now, let's watch the video which supposedly recorded the craft. In the black and white infrared video, Underwood switches to visible light, unveiling a blurry oval object in the distance. He then returns to infrared and adjusts the zoom multiple times. Abruptly, the UFO vanishes off the side of the screen. Regrettably, the target was too distant to be seen with the naked eye, and neither Underwood nor his pilot established visual contact. In the aftermath of their encounter, the Naval Strike Group continued to detect anomalous radar tracks for a minimum of two additional days. Skeptics have attempted to attribute the footage to being an airplane, but airplanes are incapable of maneuvering through the sky as if gravity doesn't apply. Even though the witness accounts might seem extraordinary to the point of being fabricated, it's crucial to note that numerous high-ranking and highly credible military personnel have substantiated these stories. Commander Fravor, along with other witnesses, asserted that they viewed an extended version of the video in higher resolution, but this footage has never been made public. Strikingly, all recorded footage from the events was purportedly erased on the same evening they were documented. 
Witnesses on both ships within the strike group contend that two individuals arrived by helicopter, gathered relevant data, and subsequently wiped all tapes and hard drives clean. These witnesses expressed astonishment, emphasizing that such actions were unprecedented. This raises the possibility of a cover-up of some nature. The possibility exists that the government is cognizant of the existence of alien life or advanced technology, but they prefer to keep this information concealed from the public, perhaps due to concerns about potential mass hysteria or to maintain a strategic advantage over adversaries. Another plausible explanation is that these sightings involve classified military technology, such as drones or aircraft, and the government is actively working to keep them covert. While significant advancements in technology are known, the notion of gravity-defying objects like the observed Tic Tacs remains perplexing. The details of what the flight crews witnessed that day remain speculative, leaving room for contemplation and curiosity. Commander Fravor estimated the craft to be approximately 12 to 15 meters long, resembling a Tic Tac. However, the details of the Tic Tac's appearance remain ambiguous. Were these objects opaque, akin to the typical UFOs commonly depicted, or did they feature cockpits with alien pilots controlling the craft, zooming off only after their operation was disrupted? Regrettably, these specifics remain elusive, leaving us with unanswered questions and a sense of mystery. Number 2. The Mysterious Cube Enclosed by a Translucent Sphere A comparable encounter to the Tic Tac incident was captured on film on the southeastern coast of America in early 2015. Although those who recorded the footage have not stepped forward, some crewmates and fellow pilots have shared parts of the backstory. About a decade after the initial Tic Tac sightings in the summer of 2004, a naval strike group commanded by the aircraft carrier USS Theodore Roosevelt engaged in training exercises off the coast of Virginia the nature of this encounter bore a striking resemblance to the previous incident described. Anomalous radar tracks were initially observed and dismissed, but as gravity-defying hypersonic objects violating the laws of physics continued to be detected, the crew re-evaluated their equipment and became convinced of the reality of what they were witnessing. Initial attempts at interception were unsuccessful until a critical moment when two jets, flying no more than a few tens of meters apart, narrowly avoided a mid-air collision when an unknown object flew directly between them. While the pilots involved in the encounter have not personally come forward, Lieutenant Ryan Graves, a fellow F-18 pilot, reported speaking to one of the pilots who landed, recounting that the experience had visibly unnerved him. Lieutenant Graves elaborated on this encounter during the UAP, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, Congressional Hearing. During a training mission in Warning Area Whiskey 72, 10 miles off the coast of Virginia Beach, two F-18 Super Hornets were split by a UAP. The object, described as a dark gray or a black cube inside of a clear sphere, came within 50 feet of the lead aircraft and was estimated to be 5 to 15 feet in diameter. The mission commander terminated the flight immediately and returned to base. Our squadron submitted a safety report, but there was no official acknowledgement of the incident and no further mechanism to report the sightings. Soon, these encounters became so frequent that aircrew would discuss the risk of UAP as part of their regular pre-flight briefs. In this instance, the described craft took the form of a cube enclosed by a translucent sphere. Given the likely astonishment and startle of both pilots, it becomes challenging to precisely discern the details of what they observed in such a brief span of time. Lieutenant Ryan Graves emphasized that this incident was not isolated and that similar occurrences had been witnessed by dozens of pilots over several months. Additionally, he noted that the observed objects had the capability to remain airborne for extended periods, sometimes up to 12 hours at a time. Number 1. Bob Lazar was probably right. In a subsequent incident a few months later in 2015, when the USS Theodore Roosevelt was positioned off the coast of Florida, pilots recorded another clip that left everyone involved astounded. Notably, the craft captured in the footage appeared to rotate and maneuver, 
in a manner somewhat resembling the description given by Bob Lazar, particularly in terms of flying on its side. The craft's shape even exhibited a heart-like configuration reminiscent of Lazar's accounts of the gravity warping effect in the crafts he claimed to have reverse-engineered. However, some skeptics argue that the rotation observed in the video is merely an optical illusion resulting from the camera's derotation mechanism. Despite this, the two pilots themselves did not perceive it as an image rotation. One might assume that if anyone could identify image rotation, it would be the pilots who are familiar with such visuals. The pilots insisted that the craft genuinely rotated. Furthermore, Jeremy Corbell, an electro-optical engineer and expert in the ATF Liar camera system, attested that it is not an optical illusion. Moreover, even if the rotation were explained as an optical illusion, it wouldn't account for the details remarked upon by the pilots in the subsequent clip. Indeed, it's intriguing to learn about the individual behind the public release of these videos, Luis Elizondo. He served as the head of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, a covert government-funded initiative focused on investigating UFO sightings. Elizondo's disillusionment with the government's approach to UFO research led him to resign in late 2017. He asserted that certain individuals within the government strongly oppose UFO research, and he expressed concerns that the government appears indifferent to potential national security implications related to these phenomena. Certainly, numerous military personnel assert that sightings of unidentified aerial phenomena are common, but often go unreported. The fear of career repercussions and the potential perception of being labeled as a conspiracy theorist can dissuade individuals from speaking out and jeopardize their chances for promotions. The UFO topic carries a stigma, prompting the government to adopt the term UAP to avoid associations with aliens, spaceships, and stereotypical UFO-related narratives, including probing human experiences. So, which of these proofs do you find the most interesting? Let us know in the comments sections down below. Sections down below. Sections down below.